Internal combustion engines have been the backbone of the automotive industry for over a century. They've powered everything. From the early horseless carriage to the latest sports cars that make your neighbor's midlife crisis a little more bearable. <laughs> These engines work by igniting a fuel-air mixture within a cylinder, causing a small explosion that drives a piston. This piston, in return, moves the crankshaft, which is the magical twisty bit that makes your wheels go round and round. It's like a controllable series of tiny fireworks under your hood, only without the risk of setting off car alarms every time you drive by. When talking about types of internal combustion engines, let's start with the gasoline engines, the most popular kit on the block. Gasoline engines come in two flavors, four-stroke and two-stroke. The four-stroke cycle is your basic overachiever, involving four stages, intake, compression, power, and exhaust. It's like a well-choreographed dance, but instead of swan-like ballet moves, you get the roar of acceleration. First, the intake stroke opens up the valve and invites a mixture of air and fuel into the cylinder. The piston moves up during the compression stroke, squeezing the mixture like a frustrated toddler with Play-Doh. Then comes the power stroke, where the spark plug ignites the mix, causing a controlled explosion that pushes the piston down with the force of a tiny Hulk smash. Finally, the exhaust stroke opens back up another valve and lets the burnt gases out, like the engine taking a satisfied breath after a good workout. Two-stroke gasoline engines, on the other hand, are like the rebels of the engine world. They're simpler and lighter, and they skip a couple of steps to get the job done. But this shortcut comes at a cost. They're less efficient and more polluting. Imagine them as the fast food of engines. Quick and dirty, but not great for long-term health. Now, diesel engines are the sturdy workhorses of the automotive world. They also come in four-stroke and two-stroke varieties. Diesel engines work a lot like gasoline engines, but with a key twist. They don't bother with spark plugs. Instead, they compress the air in the cylinders to make higher pressure, making it so hot that when diesel fuel is ejected, it ignites spontaneously. It's like the engine's version of rubbing two sticks together to start a fire, but a lot faster and more reliable. The four-stroke diesel cycle goes through intake, compression, power, and exhaust just like the gasoline engines, but with that high-pressure twist. The two-stroke diesel engines are rare in modern cars, but still hang around in some commercial vehicles. Like that old guy at the gym who still does bench presses with a questionable technique. Now, nothing comes without the perks and quirks. Just like that, these engines come with some advantages and disadvantages. Ah! Gasoline engines are the life of the party, with their high power output and smooth operation. They're the ones that make your car purr like a content cat or roar like a lion, depending on how heavy your foot is on the pedal. <laughs> Plus, gasoline is pretty easy to find. Just about every gas station has it, but they aren't perfect. Gasoline engines are like that friend who's always up for a good time but isn't great with money. They're less fuel efficient and tend to produce more emissions, which isn't great for the planet. Diesel engines, on the other hand, are the sensible ones in the group. They're known for their higher fuel efficiency, which means fewer trips to the pump and more money in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, boy. They also have greater torque, which is why you often find them in trucks and heavy machinery. They can haul some serious weight without breaking a sweat and they tend to last a lot longer, making them the marathon runners of the engine world. But diesel engines aren't all sunshine and rainbows. They're more expensive up front and can be noisier. Think of them as the engines that enjoy a good shout, and while they're better on fuel, they can emit higher levels of certain pollutants, which is a bit of a downer. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! Electric motors are the new cool kids in the automotive world, and for good reasons. They're efficient, environmentally friendly, and almost eerily quiet. Unlike their gasoline-guzzling counterparts, electric motors use electrical energy to generate mechanical motion, making them a cleaner, quieter alternative. It's kind of like swapping out your noisy neighbor's lawnmower for a silent electric one. Suddenly, peace and efficiency rule the day. Let's break down the types of electric motors you'll find humming away under the hood of modern electric vehicles. First up, we have DC motors. These come in two main platforms, brushed and brushless. Brushed DC motors are the simpler, more cost-effective option. They've been around for a while and are known for their straightforward design. However, they require more maintenance because those brushes tend to wear out over time. Think of them as like trusty high-end maintenance friends who always need a little extra attention. On the other hand, brushless DC motors are the more sophisticated and durable co-internal combustion engines. They're like the friend who's got their life together, efficient, reliable, and ready to go the extra mile without much fuss. Brushless motors are common in modern electric vehicles because they offer better performance and require less upkeep. Moving on to AC motors, we have induction motors and synchronous motors. Induction motors are the workhorses of the electric motor world. They're reliable, robust, and have been powering many electric vehicles, including the famed Tesla models. These motors are like a dependable friend who's always there when you need them, no matter what. Synchronous motors, on the other hand, are all about precision. 
They provide precise control over speed and position, making them ideal for high-performance electrical vehicles. If induction motors are the steady marathon runners, synchronous motors are the sprinters, delivering quick and accurate bursts of power when needed. Now, how do these electric motors work their magic? It's all about electromagnetism. When an electric current flows through a coil within a magnetic field, it creates a force that causes the coil and the attached rotor to spin. In DC motors, this current usually comes from batteries, making them perfect for electric cars. AC motors, however, use alternating current supplied by the vehicle's inverter. It's like having a perfectly choreographed dance where electricity is the music and the motor components are the dancers, moving in perfect harmony. Electric motors come with their own set of perks and quirks. The advantages are pretty impressive. They boast high efficiency, zero tailpipe emissions, instant torque, and low maintenance. Imagine never having to deal with oil changes or noisy exhaust pipes again. Plus, the instant torque means electric vehicles can accelerate like a rocket, giving you the thrilling pushback into your seat whenever you hit the pedal. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Electric vehicles do have some limitations, such as a limited range compared to traditional internal combustion engine vehicles. It's like going on a road trip with a snack supply that runs out faster than you'd like. Refueling times, or rather recharging times, are also longer, meaning you'll need to plan your charging stops on long journeys. And while the costs of electric vehicles are coming down, they still tend to have higher upfront costs than their gas-powered cousins. It's like buying a fancy new gadget. It costs more initially, but the benefits often outweigh the extra expense in the long run. Yes! Yes! Hybrid engines are like the peacekeepers of the automotive world, bringing together the best of internal combustion engines and electrical motors. They strike a balance between fuel efficiency and reduced emissions, making them a win-win for both drivers and the environment. Picture a hybrid engine as a duet where both singers, the internal combustion engines, and the electric motor take turns and sometimes harmonize to create a beautiful melody of efficiency and performance. Here are the different types of hybrid engines you might encounter. First, we have parallel hybrids. In this setup, both the internal combustion engines and the electrical motor can independently or jointly power the vehicle. It's like having two chefs in a kitchen who can whip up a meal separately or team up for a culinary masterpiece. Depending on the driving conditions, your car might switch between the electric motor for those smooth, quiet city drives and the internal combustion engine for when you need that extra oomph on the highway. <laughs> Next, there are series hybrids. This configuration is a bit different. The internal combustion engines here don't drive the wheels directly. Instead, it acts as a generator, producing electricity that powers the electric motor. Imagine a backstage crew working tirelessly to ensure the spotlight stays on the main performer, the electric motor. Nice. While less common in passenger cars, this setup shines in heavy-duty applications where consistent power is key. Then we have plug-in hybrids. These are the overachievers of the hybrid world. They come equipped with larger batteries that can be charged externally, allowing for an extended electric-only driving range. Think of them as the hybrids who stay up late studying and show up extra prepared for the exam. With a PHEV, you can enjoy the benefits of electric driving for your daily commute and have the reassurance of the internal combustion engines for longer trips. So, how do these hybrid engines pull off their magic? Oh my god! Wow! In a parallel hybrid, both the internal combustion engines and the electric motor are connected to the vehicle's transmission. The car can seamlessly switch between the electric motor, the internal combustion engine, or both, depending on what the situation demands. For instance, the electric motor might take the lead at low speeds, giving you that whisper-quiet drive through town. When you hit the highway or need more power, the internal combustion engine kicks in and takes over on the assist. In a series hybrid, it's a bit like a relay race. The internal combustion engine doesn't directly drive the wheels. Instead, it powers a generator that produces electricity for the electric motor. This setup ensures that the electric motor maintains the star of the show, handling the driving duties with the internal combustion engine staying behind the scenes, generating the necessary power. Now, of course, hybrid engines come with their own set of advantages and quirks. On the plus side, they offer improved fuel efficiency and reduced emissions, making them a greener co-internal combustion engine compared to traditional internal combustion engine vehicles. They also provide flexibility in power sources, giving you the best of both worlds. However, this added complexity can mean higher costs and potential trade-offs in performance as compared to pure electric vehicles. Now, let's switch gears to the cutting-edge world of hydrogen fuel cells. These are the new kids on the block, promising zero emissions with the added benefit of longer driving ranges and faster refueling times. Imagine a car that produces nothing but water vapor as it drives. It's like having a personal rain cloud that only brings good news. Hydrogen fuel cells work by combining hydrogen gas with oxygen from the air in an electrochemical reaction. This process generates electricity, which powers the vehicle's electric motor, and the only byproduct is water vapor. 
It's a bit like a magic trick where hydrogen and oxygen go in and clean energy comes out, leaving behind nothing but a puff of water vapor. The advantages of hydrogen cell vehicles are quite compelling. They offer zero emissions, faster fueling times, and longer ranges as compared to battery electric vehicles. It's like having the best of both worlds clean, quick, and capable of going the distance. However, the road to widespread adoption is still bumpy. The limited refueling infrastructure and high cost of hydrogen production and storage are significant challenges. Plus, the vehicles themselves are currently more expensive, making them a niche co-internal combustion engines for now. I gotta tell you, it was perfect. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the mechanics of car motors. I hope you learned something.